Evening all. Well, we've got two more weeks of the school holidays left to go. Um, I've been mixing it up a little bit, trying to do uh, my work and also um, keep abreast of what's going on in the news, as well as entertaining my sons, taking them places, spending time with my wife as well. And it's all been great this week. Uh, I just wasn't so wrapped up in culture war stuff um, because I was teaching my two sons how to play role playing games. So I've dusted off my old copies of um, um, Dungeons and Dragons. We've been doing The Village of Homlet. Um, and it's been nice to do some tabletop role playing, you know, character sheets, dice, pens, papers, maps, miniature figures, or, you know, all that stuff. And um, they're really enjoying it. in Engages their imagination, uh, you know, they, they occasionally can go back to the Xbox or the PCs and do stuff. But it's really nice to be doing kind of hands-on, proper tabletop gaming. And it's been a great relief because sometimes, you know, when you do a lot of this culture war stuff and there's, uh, you know, there's an incessant fight against what I call the socialists and the far left and the communists. And you're trying to fend off the... FBP globalists and then you're trying to convince the normies of what's really going on in the world and then you got blue on blue action where um, one group of people on the right accuse another group group of people on the right of not being properly on the right and being cucks and all that and you got to like you know, it's just it becomes a tangled mess after one you just need to step back and I recommend that for anybody just just take a step back and enjoy some of the fantastic things in the world whilst you still can. And that leads me on into what I'm going to talk about this week. So, uh, let's start with Greta Thunberg's uh, Odyssey. Um, so she, as I mentioned last week, she was getting on um, a sailing yacht to travel across the Atlantic to go and give a talk at the United Nations. Um, originally it was reported that she was going to um, talk to uh, the White House or um, Congress or you know, to talk just to the American government. But it turns out she's speaking to the UN, but um, uh, the Trump administration's not going to be inviting her around for tea and cakes. Um, why should they? Um, but some things have emerged from this story. First of all, this whole idea that her trip is carbon neutral is something of a misnomer because, uh, yes, she's going wind-powered across the sea and getting seasick, apparently. But also, um, it was this yacht is a state-of-the-art yacht built with modern industrial uh, technology and it relies on GPS uh, navigation which is put into space by rockets so it's not really carbon neutral but it's again this is all part of the Greta Thunberg publicity stunt now there were two things that were said one frivolous and one a lot more serious I'll deal with the frivolous one first because Aaron Banks the uh, Brexit campaigner made a uh, a kind of uh, risque joke about um, uh, the weather, uh, the sailing conditions in August in the Atlantic are quite treacherous and something might happen. And so pre predictably the left got um, very wound up about this, uh, that he, he was wishing that something unfortunate would come of Greta. Um, this is not serious. I mean, I don't think he would have... Uh, wanted that but none of us really want her to sink to the bottom of the ocean seriously, we don't seriously want her to die I want to just make her a martyr for one thing but I think people are getting sick and tired of the Greta Thunberg show and it is a show and there's a lot of fakery behind it now with Banks' um, off-coloured joke, all those people who said, who defended Joe Brand saying, you know, it's an off-coloured joke, but she should have the right to say it, blah, 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 have kind of forgotten about all that because now Banks has got to be taken to task for what he said. Carol Cadwallader, um, who is continuing her spiral descent into insanity, has said, you know, let's remember this tweet and let's go after him, prosecute him, put him behind bars. You know, for what? But in the mind of Carol Cadwallader, um, people like Aaron Banks are out and out criminals. Um, I can seriously, why is she journalist of the year? She is uh, a cackling mad woman, as far as I'm concerned. Um, her style of journalism is, is completely hysterical. It's um, not often well researched. It relies purely on her subjective opinions, um, and not uh, there's no there's no. Um, 
rationality or even handedness in what she does. She's an activist hiding behind the uh, um, badge of being a journalist. She should not have won an award for journalism because she's not a journalist, she's an activist. Anyway, the um, so you know, it's a it's an off coloured joke by Banks. It's just something that you should just you know say a bit off, shrug, move on. Um, but the thing is, what Greta said and what some of her supporters said, um, because her supporters kind of um, have given her that kind of nebulous um, protection, that nebulous shield that she's just a child. Um, this is what they did with David Hogg and the Parkland survivors who are um, now anti-firearms activists, amongst other things. I think David Hogg's gone full-on um, socialist activist, of which um, uh, gun control is his, his, is his chief thing, but he's like a full-on socialist. But they, these teenage activists hide behind it. I'm just a kid, you can't come after me, I'm to be protected. Or they get people to say it on their behalf. But on the other hand, um, you know, how many adults can get to speak to the UN? How many adults can get to the, the ear of all these Western leaders um, and get on the front cover of GQ magazine and all the rest of it? So um, I don't buy this, um, this, oh, they're just a kid. You know, a lot of Greta Thunberg's and, well, particularly David Hogg's opinions are abhorrent to anybody who believes in freedom and who believes in liberty and who believes in classical liberal values. And it's the same with Greta Thunberg. Um, she has this, the, the autism thing, and she's um, merely a teenager, so we can't criticise her. I think we can criticise her uh, a lot because um, I think more than David Hogg, she is a shield, she is a front, because she was saying, now we have to rethink and dismantle um, the Western economic and industrial uh, model. Now, which means communism, basically. So she is a front. The communists are advancing behind her, saying, oh, you can't touch her because she's a kid. right? But they're advancing an agenda behind her. I think the whole... If Carol Cadwallader was a proper investigative journalist, she'd be looking into the Greta Thunberg thing and she would do look and do an expose on who funds her, um, who arranges all these things for her, who is the team behind her, and, and is what she's saying uh, merely platitudes? You know, where's all the funding coming from? You know, somebody do an expose. You know, if Carol, Carol Cudwallader was a journalist, she'd be doing that. Somebody has to be doing that. Or have we just got a bunch of activists and a bunch of, you know, ornery uh, contrarians for our journalist class? It seems to be very much the latter. So there's been, um, on my Twitter feed, no doubt you've been pushed this thing. You know, Michael Portillo did a uh, show for Channel 4 called The Trouble with the Tories. And... Um, I think there are real trouble for the Tories, but I doubt it will be anything that's contained in Portillo's programme. And that is, we are seeing that a lot of Conservative MPs aren't Conservatives at all. It's doubtful whether they're even um, anywhere on the right, even the centre-right. Um, it seems that uh, the party over the years has been infiltrated by Blairites, Social Democrats, possibly even out-and-out out socialists and globalists. I don't want to sound, this to sound like a conspiracy theory, but this week we've seen um, uh, Sarah Wollaston, who has defected from the Conservatives to uh, the Liberal Democrats. And I was speaking to uh, a party, um, long-time party member, local councillor, county councillor, uh, this evening, and uh, he was saying, oh, she's always been a nightmare. Yeah, we met her, we saw her at conference. Always a nightmare. Uh, people, you know, she, she gives these talks, she gives these speeches, she meets people. And then so many Conservative Party members afterwards, after she's left, just go, who is that woman? She's just absolute nightmare. Um, they, uh, she has always been, uh, it's um, a social democrat, uh, and on the left, and um, why she got in with the Conservatives, I don't know. Maybe uh, there's echoes of what Rory Stewart said, that he joined the Conservative Party because they get things done. Um, but he wants the Conservatives to get um, Blairite or Social Democrat things done. 
Um, and they, these people are surprised when the Conservative Party do something that is mainstream and right wing. Uh, individual liberty, you know, um, making money is good, capitalism is good, um, innovation, uh, you know, um, sort of, uh, but also proper conservative stuff like, you know, managed change. Uh, perhaps the family is a good thing. Um, and um, sovereignty. Hmm, there's a thought. So, so she's left, and good riddance to her, but it does create, uh, well, it, it wipes out any Conservative Party majority. Conservatives are looking like they're going to be heading into minority government territory. And now this isn't being helped by the likes of uh, Guto Beb MP. Now, he said something extraordinary, and I don't think he's the only one, uh, Conservative MP, who has said this, but he is willing to back a Jeremy Corbyn government over a no-deal Brexit. And this is shocking. Any, the, I'm going to say something uh, bold here, if any Conservative Party members or um, uh, any sort of Conservative Party elected officials are hearing this, if you think a Jeremy Corbyn-led government of the United Kingdom is better than a no-deal Brexit, get the hell out of the Conservative Party. Right, and I'm serious, you know. The, why have you put the EU on a pedestal above a hardline socialist government, the, the threat of a hardline socialist government taking power in the United Kingdom? Why have you put the EU on such, that it's so sacrosanct that you're willing to have a chance for the Exchequer who wants to lock up your fellow Conservative Party members. You would be extinct, you idiots. So there, there's the door. Go. Go to Beb. Go. Right. Sarah Wollaston. Follow Sarah Wollaston. Just, just go. Find, find a different party. Seriously, if you think, if any Conservative Party member thinks that a Corbyn government is preferable to No Deal Breakfast, breakfast, breakfast I say, I'm getting hungry. But if you think that's better than... I've completely undermined my own credibility here. But if you think... Serious face. Okay, if you think that it's better to have Jeremy Corbyn as your prime minister in a Corbyn-led government and, and then a no-deal Brexit, get out. I could have said something a lot ruder. So speaking of alternative and scary uh, governments... Um, last week we had Caroline Lucas say that she thinks an all-female emergency national government uh, would be a great idea. She urged the Queen and the um, the women that she mentioned, you know, that they should all get together and form this emergency national government. But she got into trouble with it because of the women she wanted in her cabinet, not one of them was an ethnic minority. Oh, no. <laughs> so what was weird about the reaction to this? I mean, a lot of sensible people were saying, an all-female national emerging government, you misandrist, you, you, you lunatic. You know, this is, this is the worst idea you've ever had, and you've had quite a few. Um, but no, on the left, supposedly the parties that want equality, and justice for all. So no, 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 no. The problem isn't an all-female government, um, unelected, of course. Um, but it's uh, that there are no women of colour in it, and it just goes to show the insanity. But what I I really liked about uh, the reaction was that Caroline Lucas just kept trying to walk back a little bit, and saying, "Of course, I was sorry. I didn't do this." And every time she made an apology. She just kept digging a hole deeper. And then she made the apology and said, yes, maybe we should we, we should work. We should, we should make it more inclusive. Yes, an all-female. But I stand by my words of an all-female government. And then she would add something else, you know, just trying to elaborate on her all-female government idea. You know, that, that men are too confrontational. And uh, women would just sit down and sort out the world's problems over a cup of tea and some macaroons. And it just got deeper and deeper. And every time Caroline Lucas tweeted, it just sounded worse for her. And even I was begging her, Caroline, just stop. You know, if I was your lawyer, I'd get you to stop right now. <laughs> you know, and it was it was car crash stuff from somebody who wants to be prime minister. 
So it was, um, you know, at some point he just just watched himself destruct. As I said before, the um, this environmental activism is actually uh, a front for trying to impose communism or a new form of communism. So it's like um, still complete state control um, over all means of production and in individual lives in you know, to um, have us all thinking um, in group think, you know, to um, erase kind of like that um, individuality and debate and discussion and just impose one order, one morality on us all. Um, and it's, I, I keep saying, you know, why don't these uh, environmental activists like Greta go to China, the world's largest pollutant? Well, no, because China is kind of like the model that they are going for, um, as China uh, this week has clamped down more and more on uh, the Hong Kong protesters. The Hong Kong protesters are still out there waving uh, British and American flags and signalling that um, their values are more aligned with the West than they are with the regime. And it's at a tipping point, but I'm, I am actually quite offended in the way that nobody... Um, on the centre left or left, social democratic left, are even um, making any noises about what China's doing to Hong Kong citizens, um, because at the end of the day, you know, as Diane Abbott said, Mao did a lot of good things. That's what they believe. They believe that the Chinese communists perhaps are showing us the way with the future. You know, one child policy, social credit scores. These are all the kind of things they're advocating for over here, um, and. It's a, um, I, think, I just think it's, a, it's a mar another mark of shame uh, for the left. Um, there are, there's nobody on the left sort of speaking up for freedom anymore. Freedom is not what they want. Um, and it, we are just, it's all laid bare now. Um, if you are uh, someone inclined to vote for um, a left-wing party, you just don't value freedom. It's as simple as that. If you fancy a light meal after this presentation, why not stop off at the Dixie Cottage Chicken Store, just 300 yards from this cinema? Yes, we've all done that, haven't we? We've all been in uh, London or other big city. Um, you've been out with your friends. You've seen a film, I don't know, coming back from a party, hosted by some women you know, and they haven't put enough food out on the table, and what food they did put was just like kind of vegan and fish-based nonsense. Say you fancy something a bit meatier. Okay, there's no McDonald's nearby, no Burger King, Kentucky Fried Chicken could be too far to walk. But up ahead is a chicken cottage or a Dixie uh, chicken or a Florida fried chicken. You know what I mean? You know, bit place a bit like a KFC, but isn't a KFC. We've all gone in there and go, oh yeah, I might have the fried chicken, might have a kebab, might have a burger. Um, and it hits the spot. It will get you filled up between where you are and on the way home. They're usually not situated in the nicest parts of town. A little bit of a sort of run-down, mixed area, you know. But we've all stopped there, and we haven't thought anything of it. But this week, the government said, you know what, there's so much knife-stabbing, and, and the Mayor of London not doing much about it except blaming everybody else. So, I don't know, let's get together with those places a little bit like a KFC, but not a KFC, because they're in the parts of town where there's a little bit of spike in these violent crimes. Um, maybe they hang out there. Some of these people, they, they get their fried chicken or their kebab before they go on a stabbing spree, or perhaps um, after they stab someone, they're feeling a bit peckish, so they go to a chicken cottage. Whatever it is. But the government sort of got together and said, well, why don't we do something about it? And they said, um, what about if we ban the plastic knives? We just didn't put plastic utensils in the boxes of fried chicken. And then the government went, yeah, OK, liking what you're going with there. Or how about you could put a message on the side of the box, say, don't stab people after enjoying this meal. And they said, well, you could do that. That's not a problem. And so there was a kind of ham-fisted, you know, probably ineffective 
virtue signaling thing, but not a kind of virtue signaling thing that would really offend or put anybody out. Well, most people, because they didn't reckon on David Lammy MP. No, 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 no. David Lammy took to Twitter, as is his want, to say, oh, hmm, targeting fried chicken places, targeting the cheap fried chicken places, hey, hey, and who likes fried chicken, hey? Supposedly black people. Yeah, just all racist, aren't you, with your stereotypes. You know, what about, you know, a water, he starts going, watermelons next. Um, and really, no one was thinking down those lines. No one was thinking about that. Um, only David Lammy, because David Lammy can read, just, he can detect the slightest murmur of something racial, even if it's not there, he can he can breathe life. He can find a tiny speck. Okay, there's a there's a trope. Uh, black people supposedly like fried chicken. Well, guess what? So do a lot of white people. So do a lot of Asian people. Um, it's fried chicken. It's tasty. Even when it comes to these places, a bit like a KFC, but it is not a KFC. Okay, it's not. As um, academic agent would say, the Coke versus the uh, supermarket own brand. Wars here. It, it, it's well. It's a bit like that, isn't it? So you know, it's acceptable food, but he can see something racially charged in it. Now, what I noticed about this story is that when he went on his usual rant, he wasn't kind of getting the traction that he did with, say, perhaps the comic relief when he went after Stacey Dooley. Uh, a lot of people were hacked off with what David Lammy said, but enough of them gave him a free pass so that he got away with it, and comic relief suffered as a result um but this time people are going really the fried chicken stores david is this is this a bit much has he bitten off more than he could chew has he i'll leave that for you to decide and discuss as i attempt to bite off more than i can chew with this custard cream and on that note good night